So the present moment, one of the benefits of being anchored in your safety state, ventral vagal system, is that we're, you're going to exist more in the present moment. It's kind of an important thing, right? Uh, the funny thing is that we all exist in the present moment. We literally do. You physically, literally are in the present moment. And so am I. We're, we all exist in the present moment together, right? The, the issue is that consciously we may not feel like we exist in the present moment, obviously. You may exist, you may feel like you exist in the past. You may feel like you're existing in the future or ruminating on the future or worrying about the future. So what you physically are doing is maybe different than your conscious experience of what you're physically doing. That could be a different thing. So the issue here is to align your physical reality with what you feel. We want you to feel in the present moment along with your body, which already exists in the present moment. We have to get those two, those two things to align, right? So when we're not in the present moment, though, we can gauge our present momentness uh, by looking at our thoughts and our feelings as potential indicators. Not easy. I'm not saying it's easy. But these could be indicators of how much we are in the present moment. If we become too lost in our thoughts, if we become too emotionally distraught, uh, these are indications that we're not in the present moment. It is completely okay to have any and all emotions that you have. It is completely okay to get lost in your thoughts a little bit. But when it gets too much, not that it's wrong, but it's not helpful. And it actually could be um, reinforcing of your state. Not that you're choosing to do so. No one chooses to become too emotionally distraught or too up in their thoughts. It just kind of happens. It's a story, follow state thing for our thoughts. Uh, so it's not a bad thing. I'm not trying to say that, but it's not helpful either. So as you notice your thoughts ramping up or your feelings ramping up and escalating, that's a good indication that you're no longer existing in the present moment. And that's before we hopefully want to catch that before it gets too far. Rumination is uh, basically overthinking. We, that's where you dwell on the same thing over and over again. So that could be a way of indicating that you're no longer in the present moment is noticing like, oh, I'm just like, I'm thinking about the same thing over and over and over again, day after day, even maybe. When, when you're dwelling on something, that's a good indicator that your safety pathways are not active and therefore you are not in the present moment. When we ruminate, we tend to like hyper-focus on what people said, what people did or didn't do. Uh, that's a good indication that you're not in the present moment. When we ruminate, we tend to become disconnected from our somatic, our sensory experiences. So what our five senses are telling us, but also our somatic felt sense. We lose connection with that. That's a good way of indicating that you're not in the present moment. If you're stuck in your thoughts, uh, there's probably a good indication that you have too much defensive energy in your system. So all of that is going to compromise our capacity to be in the present moment. Um, likewise, emotional turmoil. So when we get too wrapped up in anxiety, stress, pressure, anger, and more, and again, these feelings aren't bad, but they can absolutely be overpowering, I guess is what, kind of what I'm trying to say. When we get too wrapped up in these really intense emotions, that's a really good indicator that we are not existing in the present moment, that we've lost access to our sensory experiences, more or less, right? We've lost access to our ability to connect with people. So these are good indicators. And when you're too worked up, it is kind of hard to notice them. But the, the trick, the idea, not the trick, but the hope is that we catch these before it becomes too much. So I would really encourage you to be aware, not judgmental or evaluative. And again, not easy to do. I know. But as best you can, be aware of these things. And if they happen, they happen. All right. It's not helpful to judge them. It's not helpful to evaluate them. It's not helpful to shame yourself or them or whatever it is. If you can, notice your thoughts. Use them as indicators of what state you're in or how much access you have to the present moment, which is an indicator of how much access you have to your safety pathways. The, the trick here, the goal here is not to change these thoughts and these feelings. That might sound ridiculous, but the goal is not to change them. It's actually to allow them to be there. And you, I know it sounds ridiculous, right? But when, I don't know if you've noticed, but when we have these more defensive kind of feelings and we try to make them go away, it doesn't really work out all that well. When we try to make them go away, when we uh, minimize or excuse or rationalize them, it doesn't make, doesn't help. Maybe it helps for that present moment or for that 
that instant, but those sensations, those feelings just kind of get worse in the long run, right? They just stay, you know, tightly packed maybe in our system or however you feel it. Uh, and they don't go away. So the, tr the, the idea is not to make it go away. The idea is actually to be with it. Uh, and that only happens when we have our safety pathways active. Once we are grounded in a safety state, once we're grounded in the present moment, then when we feel those things like anxiety or aggression or numbness, then we'll be able to be with it, tolerate it, be more curious about it. Not make it go away, but actually kind of invite it to be there in a way. And so what it, the, the idea would be like when you see yourself more anxious to say, I see you, anxiety, I see you there. Say hello to it. I see you there and you're welcome to stay with me. I'll be curious about you. I'm not going to get wrapped up in you. I'm not going to like start, you know, uh, thinking too much into whatever it is. So I see you, I feel you, but I'm also right now going to do something that helps me to feel safe. That's the idea. So I, I see anger, aggression, irritability, numbness. I see you, I feel you, and you're welcome to hang out with me. But I'm also going to go do something that activates my safety state. Something that activates my capacity to be more in the ground, more grounded in the present moment. So I, I can't tell you what that is. I have no idea what that de what that is for you. Uh, my course, Building Safety Anchors, that's kind of the idea is it, of it, is that I don't know the right answer for anybody, but I know that it's extremely important to feel safe, to be grounded in the present moment, to have those safety pathways active, to build the strength of our vagal break. So I know that. I just don't know what to, how to do that for you. That's kind of something you have to be curious about, is like, what feels safe for me? What do I feel those pulls towards and those pushes away from. Okay, that's the idea. Um, I think it's extremely important to focus on safety first and not delve into the other stuff, the defensive stuff quite yet. Okay, someone says, so true, and then use the sentence. I think this is a response to me saying, oh, to invite the feelings to be there. I, th I think that's what this is about. Uh, so true, and then use this sentence. I think it's then. Then use this sentence. Even though I feel anxiety, maybe. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. That could be helpful. That could be um, helpful if you believe it. That sentence, though, I love and accept myself, could easily be, that tr like, that cognition could easily be a trigger to someone be like, I don't, no, I don't. Like, I, no, I don't. But I think the idea is to, to invite that feeling to be there and then maybe have a sentence that you do believe in. Like, maybe the sentence is, anxiety, I see you, but I know things will get better. Like, maybe that's something that you could believe in. Uh, but saying I love and accept myself or I feel gratitude for this moment or whatever it is, I think the, the, the sentence that we put, the cognition that we put in there is, is actually pretty important. Oh, I like that. They said better to use and instead of but. Anxiety, I see you and I know it'll get better. I like that a lot. That's actually, that's, that's I like that. I, I really like playing with words and differentiating between words. So that's like a perfect, I love that so much. Yeah, that, that's a, uh, but indicates that things are awful, right? And indicates I, I, I have control or and indicates I got this. I see you and this is also true at the same time. I love that. Thank you for that differentiation. I love that. 